This is going to be a pretty detailed review of a uh, media center remote that uh, that I purchased uh, that has been discussed a lot on the internet, but I haven't actually found any reviews of this remote, so I thought I'd uh, shoot one. Now this remote is going to be specifically discussing how well it works with the NVIDIA Shield. Um, there, this remote does work with a bunch of different other operating systems, which I'll go in in a couple minutes, but I am specifically only going to be talking about how well it works with the NVIDIA Shield. Now, speaking of the NVIDIA Shield, I do use the NVIDIA Shield television box. I have the 2017 version of it um, for all my media content in my house. It works great. I use it for over-the-air television programming. Uh, I use it for subscription services such as uh, Sling and Prime Video and Netflix and HBO Go. Um, I use it for internet videos, uh, YouTube, uh, other kinds of uh, video um, applications. I use it for my streaming of my videos from, a, from an in-house uh, server. And it does all that. It also plays games. Um, it can actually play AAA games uh, using um, a streaming service. Uh, from your from either your PC running the game or from an online server, uh, it it basically just has everything I think that you could want in a TV media center, and I've been really impressed with it. What I haven't been impressed with is the actual remote that it comes with. Okay, so let's talk about that first. So this is the remote that the NVIDIA Shield comes with, and the first thing you can see about it is that it's pretty small. This is my hand, and I actually don't have huge hands. Um, I have I probably, you know, um, for glove size, I, I use a large hand, but it's not like an extra large giant hand that I have. And the thing that I don't like about this remote is the weight and the size. Sometimes smaller is not necessarily better, and I think in a remote control, I think this really does apply there. Um, it's very, very easy to lose this remote, misplace this remote, not see this remote. When you're in a dark environment, you won't find this remote. Um, and that's one of the things that I don't like about it. So it's small and it's very thin. It's very easy to misplace. If you have children that um, are going to be using this, um, they're going to also misplace your remote. And so for that reason, I don't really particularly like the remote. I also don't like the remote for its capabilities. Um, you can see it's a very simple remote. It has four buttons. Um, it has a voice control button, home, back, and these are your navigation buttons. And I think what it's trying to suggest is from an NVIDIA standpoint, you can get everything, go everywhere you want in NVIDIA Shield very easily by only having these four buttons. And I'm here to tell you that that's not necessarily true, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to find a remote that had a little bit more capabilities. Um, other things I don't like about this remote, it doesn't have a power button. I don't know what genius thought it was a really good idea to make a media content um, center where you're going to have everything revolving through it, and yet it's really difficult to turn it on and off. Um, having a power button, a traditional power button, I think is really important, and it's missing that. It uses this really, I think, um, on paper, slick way to change the volume. Um, right here on the remote, it has basically this area's touch screen where you can change the volume up and down. Uh, a lot of times when I'm using this, the volume will jump to a very low to a very high very quickly. Um, it does. It's not very sensitive. You can't really finely tune the volume very easily. When I'm holding the remote, I see that I accidentally will change the volume up and down. So I think on paper it's pretty slick, but in actual practice it doesn't work very well. So I'm not re real happy with the, the, the volume control. I also don't like the fact that it uses uh, CR2032 batteries. These are the button type batteries that you'll find in your supermarket or you can find on the internet. They're pretty expensive. You cannot use uh, this. Uh, um, they don't make rechargeable 2032 batteries, at least not, none that I've ever heard of. I have a bunch of rechargeable batteries um, that you know I use. I try to reduce my carbon footprint by using batteries that I'm not throwing away constantly. And the fact that you can't recharge this, you can't use rechargeable batteries and or the remote is not rechargeable, I think was a mistake. Um, and then, and then finally, I've been having a lot of problems with it actually um, losing its ability to pair to the tel to the um, to the Nvidia Shield itself. It'll time out. I'm not sure if this is a new update that caused us to have a problem, but you know, once I started having problems with it, 
uh, losing connection, that was kind of it for me. And I was like, you know what, it's time to look at other alternatives. So that's where this product comes in. Okay, so let's move this out of the way for right now. This is uh, a 2.4 gigahertz um, radio frequency remote. Uh, it has backlit screens. Um, it does work with a lot of different operating systems. It has the ability, uh, it has a gyroscopic air mouse capability in it. Um, it has voice control in it. It has a built-in keyboard. Uh, it has a lot of things going for it, and I wanted to kind of break that down in terms of how well all those things work with the NVIDIA Shield. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about the, do a little unboxing. So I will first and foremost tell you that um, this particular product goes by a bunch of different names. And it's one of the things that I dislike about buying from China is, is that somebody will make a product and then they will have tons of different branding for it, making it very confusing to know what you have. This particular remote I've found at this point in time goes by three different names. Um, it is called the TK628. Um, that's a remote that a lot of people know this remote by, uh, the TK628 Air uh, Air. Uh, remote. It also goes by the Link Style Air uh, remote. That's uh, the if you want to find this on Amazon, that's how you'll find it as the Link Style. Um, so you know, go to Amazon, check out the reviews on there. They actually have a lot of good feedback on this remote on Amazon. Uh, you can also purchase it directly uh, from China through AliExpress, which is a popular Chinese marketplace uh, that a lot of people uh, do to to buy products relatively cheaply. Uh, that's where I actually bought this product, and I will tell you that this product is not available anywhere um, outside of China. Now, I'm in the United States. Uh, it took me about two weeks to get this from uh, directly from China, which um, really, shockingly, was really quick. You know, if you think about putting something in a boat, crossing an ocean, and then getting through all the different customs and the, you know, the post offices to get to your door, getting it to me in two weeks was, was pretty spectacular. Uh, you're generally looking anywhere from a month to six weeks when you buy direct from China. But no matter where you purchase this from, it is being shipped from China. Even if you purchase it on Amazon, you're still going to be getting it from China, and it's still going to take a long, a good while to get it. I purchased mine on AliExpress. It took about two weeks to get it. The price of the remote is anywhere between $15 to $30, depending upon where you purchase it. Um, I purchased mine again from AliExpress. Um, that link is actually in the um, a description link that I'll show uh, that I'll have a little at the bottom in the description of this video. Um, I got it for about fifteen dollars, but the price range depending upon where you get it from. Um, all right, so let's do an unboxing. So uh, it's pretty simple packaging. Um, um, this particular brand of the remote is called the Airfly Mouse Wokai. So I'm going to call this the Airfly Mouse. If you Google Airfly Mouse Wokai, you probably aren't going to get any hits, which is really interesting. On AliExpress, it's called some vague 2.4 gigahertz, you know, media center remote. They actually don't even call it the Airfly Mouse. They don't call it the Wokai. Um, so if you're trying to find it using this name, you're probably going to have, at least at this point in time, you're going to have uh, problems finding it. So again, if you want to get this particular remote from AliExpress, use the link uh, that I'll have in the, in the description below this video. Okay, But it has simple packaging, uh, information on the manufacturer, on the side, on the back, some information about its features, um, its basic functions. It does work with a bunch of different operating systems. Here you can see that it works with Android, Windows, Mac, and Linux. I am using it on the NVIDIA Shield, which is an Android uh, operating system. Um, so I can't speak to how well it works on these other operating systems, but it does function um, across a lots of different operating systems, which is um, you know, it's an interesting capability. Um, it also has a bunch of icons on the sides, just giving you information about, you know, some of its highlights for this remote, uh, but it's simple packaging. Uh, now I will tell you that I've been using this remote for about a month. Uh, I wanted to, you know, definitely kick the tires with it for a little while to make sure that I was confident before I gave a review about what, you know, how well it works with the Nvidia Shield, what's its pros and cons are. So, um, so I've actually already unpackaged this and used it. But when you unpackage it, you get a user manual and you get the remote. Now the user manual is, from what I've read, uh, is not very helpful. Uh, there is an English side here, um, giving you information about the buttons, and then there's a Chinese side here. Um, 
and I have been told, I haven't actually read this remote because the print is so tiny that <laughs> I can't read it. I know people are actually taking pictures of the manual with their phone and then blowing up the picture so they can read it. Um, but I, I figured out everything um, through the, the detailed link that I will have in the description below here. So I didn't use this. If I can find a PDF version of this remote, I will also link it in this des description below. But from what I'm told, um, this manual is written in kind of broken Chinese, and it's not, uh, it's not very helpful. So, All right, so let's talk about the remote here. All right. So, uh, this is the AirFly mouse, and the first thing I want to talk about with this AirFly mouse is its comparison with the NVIDIA Shield. You can see that it's a lot bigger, it's wider, it's longer, it's thicker, and, and I really actually prefer my remotes this size. Uh, I know that that is a personal preference, but you know, growing up with remote controls in your hand, um, this is this is kind of the classical size of remote control, and this is what I prefer. Maybe I'm an old guy, and, and maybe you know I can't deal with these these you know small footprint type devices. But I've had a lot of problems finding this, and I haven't seen any benefits having a remote this tiny, quite frankly. So, um, in the back of the remote, you're going to have a battery compartment, and I will let you know that it, here on the battery compartment is where the actual dongle is. Uh, it is, as I mentioned, a 2.4 gigahertz radio frequency remote. Um, so I'm going to get the dongle here. This is what the dongle looks like. So it's small, um, which is not necessarily a bad thing. You know, when you pl plug it in your media center, it's not going to stick out really wide. Um, it doesn't have any LED lights on it, so it's not going to blink and be irritating like some of these other dongles are. Uh, so, you know, it does its job. It does it pretty well. Um, but it is small, and if you lose it, you're not going to have the the uh, majority of the functionality of the remote anymore. And that's actually, this dongle is stored when you purchase it inside this battery compartment. Okay, so I want to highlight things about this remote control that I liked a lot with NVIDIA Shield. So the first thing I want to talk about is we're going to go from the top of the remote down. Uh, the first thing I like is that it has a power button. Again, I have no idea why you don't put a power button on a remote for a media center um, device. I think NVIDIA Shield was really, um, you know, that's lacking in the NVIDIA Shield uh, television remote. This one has it. It works really well, and I'll show you how well it works when, when I show you capabilities a little bit later on in the video. Up here, there's a bunch of content here. None of these contents I actually use. Okay, this, this allows you to control your video back and forth, fast forward, rewind, play, pause. You can do all this content with most video applications nowadays just using your navigation buttons. I, you know, I think that it's more comfortable using that for this, so I don't really use that. But I will tell you that these do work. This is your bright, this is your backlight button, which you would think you would need to turn that on for the backlight to work. But actually, any button that you press on this remote will turn the backlight off, which is nice. So you're not searching for this button in the dark. You press any button and the bike backlight will go on. Uh, so there really isn't any real reason for having that, um, but that's what that's for. Okay, so let's talk about things that are actually really important with the NVIDIA Shield, and that's this section of the remote. Um, you've got your back button, your home button, and your menu button, and this is your navigation keys. If you take a look at the NVIDIA Shield remote, you've got a back button, a home button, your navigation key remote. So that's, they're all kind of sequestered in the same areas, similar to the NVIDIA Shield. I will tell you that the back and the home are reversed on this remote, so that's a little bit confusing. But um, um, that is kind of the way that it's laid out. The information uh, or the menu button does not work on the NVIDIA Shield, so uh, there really isn't any reason for having that. Uh, these navigation buttons work very, very well. This big, huge OK button is really nice to have because that's basically your enter button, and you use that a lot with the remote. Moving down, you have volume buttons, which work also very well, which I'm very pleased about. Um, you have a mute button, so that will instantly turn your sound on and off, which is very uh, um, very good to have when you're trying to have a conversation with somebody or all of a sudden the phone, uh, you get a phone call or what have you, you can mute your, uh, uh, your television very quickly. Uh, this is your AirFly mouse um, 
basically a gyroscopic mouse button that when you press this on this remote will basically work like a pointer and you can move it around and actually move the pointer on your screen. I'll show you how, how that works with the NVIDIA Shield. These are page up and down buttons here. Again, this does not work with the NVIDIA Shield, so I don't use it. A bunch of numerical key buttons I think um, would be good if you, you know, from a classical television sense, if you want to dial in your channels using this, um, you could use it. However, I will, I basically go up and down on my channels very quickly using these navigation buttons. So I don't really use these numerical buttons, but they're here. Um, over here you've got some uh, kind of Windows media buttons. Again, I don't use any of these. Um, you've got your voice control button. Now one of the things I don't like about this remote is if you take a look at the NVIDIA Shield, you'll see that the voice control button is the second biggest button on the whole remote. I mean, it's, it's literally smack dab where you put your thumb, you're always on it. So from an NVIDIA Shield standpoint, they really are trying to push its voice control technologies. And for that reason, it is always it is the button that your, your finger is generally resting on, okay? One of the things I hate about this remote is how small this button is. It's very hard to find it uh, very quickly compared to the NVIDIA Shield remote. Um, and so that's one of the things I don't like about it. On the bottom, these color keys, these are actually learning remote keys. This, this remote also functions as a learning remote. Um, it can learn IR signals from components. If you have components that use IR, you can actually program those buttons in um, using these learning. In order to actually use different components that have been learned, you have to press this TV button on. When you press this TV button, it actually changes the remote from a 2.4 gigahertz remote to an IR remote. So when you press TV remote, everything here doesn't work um, with whatever you've got the dongle plugged into. It will only work uh, as an IR learning uh, learned remote at that point. Um, I will tell you that um, the manual doesn't do a good job explaining how to teach um, this remote um, the buttons that you're interested in. There's a lot more information about that in the thread that I've linked below, so read that. There is some confusion about whether or not it's only these four buttons that you can learn or the whole remote. I've actually read that people say that you can actually use every, you can actually teach every single one of these buttons uh, for whatever component you want uh, on your remote. I don't use these learning buttons at all, which is why I'm kind of vague about how well they work. Um, I only have a television and I have an NVIDIA Shield and that's all I need. So um, I control the volume of my television through my NVIDIA Shield. So there really isn't anything that I need to do to control my television with from an IR standpoint. I don't have any other components that I need to uh, use from an IR standpoint. So that is a function of this remote that I don't use, so I can't really speak about. Um, <clears throat> now one of the things I'll say about these buttons, which I actually also really like, is the feeling when you press them. So there's a good amount of feedback and noise, so it's got a tactile, audible um, component to it, so when you press it, you know. I do like that about this remote, kind of similar to a keyboard. When you press a key on a keyboard, you want to be able to feel the feedback when you do that, and you feel that with this remote. You can see how loud it is. Um, it's, it's somewhat similar um, to, to the, the NVIDIA Shield remote. Um, so. They actually don't, they don't do a, a terrible job with that with this remote, but there are remotes that you get out there where the buttons are soft and mushy and you can't really feel when you've you pressed it down. And so I, I will tell you from that standpoint, I think this remote does a good job with that from a quality standpoint. Uh, on the back, you have a full keyboard, okay, um, which does work with the NVIDIA Shield. Uh, I have used it. Um, I don't really search and obtain my content that much using the keyboard, but it's nice that it's there. Um, I, you know, every once in a while I guess I could use it um, very quickly, so it's nice to have it, but it wasn't something that I was kind of like, I need to have a, a, a keyboard on, on my Media Center remote, but it's nice that it's, it, that it's there. Um, I will tell you that sometimes when I'm holding the remote, I'll accidentally press the keyboard buttons. 
but the keyboard will only function if you're actually in like a searchable text field in your Nvidia Shield. So it really doesn't do anything if you accidentally press it. So if it did if it did mess up the the operating system when you're messing with that would be a huge problem because I do tend to accidentally press them a lot when I'm holding it, but that hasn't been a huge problem for me. Okay. So the next thing I want to do with this remote is talk about its other function that I really like, which is it has a backlight, and a lot of remotes don't have that. Um, I mentioned the NVIDIA Shield doesn't have that, and I think that's a real shortcoming, so I wanted to show you how well the, the backlight works with this particular remote. So I'm going to turn the, the lights off. I'll be back in one sec. All right, we're pretty dark now. Um, I'll press a button anywhere on the remote. As I mentioned, any button actually controls the backlight keys. And you can see that they all pretty much light up pretty well. Now there are some quality issues with the backlight. Some of the keys are brighter than others. One of the things I like about the remote is that it actually has a backlight cutoff. That if you don't press a key within 10 seconds, it shuts the light down to preserve your battery, which is nice. Um, if you're constantly, you know, if, if you're constantly pressing keys, it actually starts the timer back over again. So it, the 10 second timer only starts when you stop pressing keys. So as long as you're pressing keys, the backlight stays on. The other really slick thing about this backlight is that the, the remote knows when you have turned it over. So you'll see, I'm gonna flip the remote over, bam, it turns the keyboard on. I think that's pretty slick. It doesn't actually have both of them on and now it turns the front on. It doesn't have both of them on at the same time because what's what's the purpose of lighting up your keyboard if you're not using it? The only time you, you need your keyboard lit up is when you actually turn it over and you're using it. So I think that's another really slick thing about this remote is, is that it actually senses through its gyroscopic um, capability what side of the remote that you're using and again it conserves batteries in that way. So that's nice. Uh, so I'm going to be back in a second. I'm going to show you how well it actually works with the NVIDIA Shield itself. So I'll uh, be right back. All right, we're back. Uh, I've got the NVIDIA Shield on. I'm using a small television. This is kind of my tester television where I am uh, use it when I'm uh, building computers or checking out new technologies. It's a lot easier to use than going up to my dining room and using on my big television. But this will work fine for this video. Uh, again, I'm using the 2017 version of the NVIDIA TV box. It has the newest operating system on it uh, to date, which is um, November 2018. A couple things I want to talk to you about before we get into how well it functioned with the system is that when I first bought the remote and I put the dongle into the NVIDIA Shield, it did not work at all. And I got very frustrated and I was very confused because I was under the impression it was a plug-and-play device. And what I found out is uh, here is the here's the NVIDIA TV box. You can see it's very small. Um, and there are two USB ports here. There's one here and there's one here. I actually had this in the port on the right-hand side. And for whatever reason, this if you plug it in this port, it will not work. And I don't know why that is. Um, both of those USB ports do work. But you do need to have this plugged into the port that's right next to the HDMI for it to work. So just kind of a... A little bit of a cautionary statement there. If you do purchase this remote, um, make sure that you plug the dongle into the left port. Uh, I am not using a USB hub. I don't know how well this works with the USB hub. Maybe it works fine. Um, but you know, one of the I guess one of the negatives with this particular remote is you are going to be taking up one of the USB dongles or one of the USB ports for the dongle. So you're only going to have one left. Hasn't presented a problem for me so far, but um, just to let you know, that's the situation. Now, uh, the other thing I want to talk about with the remote is the remote uses, as I mentioned, 2.4 gigahertz radio frequency signal. Okay, And um, the cool thing about that is that the NVIDIA Shield remote uses Bluetooth. That means that you can actually use both the remotes. So here I am... Um, moving up and down through the operating system using this remote and then I can do the same thing over here. Okay, So you can actually use both remotes at the same time. Now obviously you wouldn't do that but the good news is if the battery dies on this remote you can instantly pick up your old NVIDIA Bluetooth remote and use it. So you actually have it as a backup. Okay, 
So because they use different types of um, um, communication technologies, you can actually use both at the same time. So I thought I'd point that out. Okay, so as I mentioned, the most important parts of the, the remote are this button, this button, and then the navigation with the OK keys. And you can see that it actually moves through the NVIDIA Shield operating system very quickly from up and down to right and left. And then if you want to press OK, you press Enter. And then this is a submenu where you can go in. You can press the Home key, get right back to the operating center. Okay, so this actually works really well, and I'm very pleased with this part because you know 95% of what you're going to use this remote for are these navigation keys, your home button, and your back button. Okay, so let's talk about the volume button. So we'll go into our over the air um, programming here. This is just a local television channel, and you can see I can turn the volume up and down very easily using these buttons, which I actually prefer much over the NVIDIA Shield. Um, if you've got it up and the phone rings or you need to have a conversation, you can just mute it and then you can turn it back on again. So the mute button functions really, really well. So I like the fact that both of these work very well and again, this is the other part of the remote that you're going to be using a lot. A lot your volume keys and your mute and unmute key. Now let's go back to the home screen. The power button also works very well with the NVIDIA Shield. Uh, now, um, if you just press the power button, what it will do, and I will show you, it will put the NVIDIA Shield into uh, hibernation. It basically puts it into a sleep mode, and it's not now sending signal to the television. Most modern televisions, when they don't detect a signal, they will in turn go into hibernation mode. So basically, by just pressing the power button on the NVIDIA Shield, you are now putting your television into hibernate mode, and you're not using it anymore. Okay. If you press any of the buttons on, on the NVIDIA Shield again, it will open it, basically wake it back up, and you'll be ready to rock and roll again. If you hold the power button down, you will get what they call the power control screen where now you can actually really turn the whole thing off, the NVIDIA Shield off, and or restart it or sleep it or put it in airplane mode. So it has that functionality as well. So that's kind of slick um, regarding the, uh, the, the power button. So it works really well. I use it all the time and I'm very pleased that I actually have an instant way to uh, turn my television off, i.e. put it in hibernation mode, um, which before I needed to go into settings, and then I needed to go into sleep, and then I needed to say yes. So it was like a three-step process. Now it's a one-step process. So I really like that about this remote. All right. So last but not least, we'll talk about the voice control. Now I will tell you that the NVIDIA Shield does a great job with the voice control. Um, that's probably, it gets a 10 out of 10 in, in on my book in terms of how well it functions uh, from a voice control standpoint. Uh, the the AirFly mouse, I'd probably give it more like a 7 out of 10. It works, it does an okay job, but it doesn't do nearly as well as uh, the NVIDIA Shield. In order to actually get the Google Assistant to work, what you need to do is you need to go up to Google Assistant, which is at the top of your NVIDIA Shield, press OK, okay, and then you need to turn the remote button to turn it on. I've already got it turned on, so it should just work. Um, and there's a delay. If you start speaking right away, it's not going to hear you. So you have to basically wait like maybe a, a second and then start talking. So let's see how well this works. So I've got it on my Google Assistant. I press OK, okay, and then I can say something like, um, Let's see here. Can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? For sure. Want to hear some weird facts? So you can see that it actually, you know, hears me pretty well, but you do have a two-step process. With the NVIDIA remote, all you have to do is press the, this, and instantly it would hear everything that you said. Okay? Um, so that, that was pretty cool. Um, I don't understand. Right. But with this button, you actually have to go up to the search button to do it. And I actually do get all my con I, I actually do uh, open up a lot of my content using voice control. You know, if I want to watch a movie or television series on Netflix, um, you know, instead of just opening up Netflix, you know, I'll go into um, 
voice control. Let's see if it works. Watch Daredevil on Netflix. And okay, uh, opening Netflix. You know, and it just opens it up, and 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 you're off to go. So it's not doing that right now because uh, I've got a uh, children's profile going on. But um, that's a really excellent thing about Google Assistant is that you don't actually have to thumb through a whole bunch of different content to find what you do. All you have to do is tell Google what you want, and it'll open it up for you. So you know, it does work. Um, the mic button is right there. Okay, let's see. See that little dot right there? That's the mic button. And one of the things that I can tell you, because I've actually um, hooked an app onto, or I've loaded an app onto the NVIDIA Shield but that is a, a voice recorder mic uh, app, is, is that it actually detects sound very low. And in order to actually, for it to hear you well, you actually have to bring the remote kind of close to your mouth, almost like a phone. And then it will it'll actually pick up your voice. And so some people will say, well, you know, the mic's not very you know, good. It, it, it doesn't hear my voice really well. Well, if you've got the remote down in your lap and you're, and you're speaking to it, it probably, and there's background noise, it's probably not going to hear you. So you do need to, with this, you do need to bring the, the remote kind of up near your mouth to speak for it to pick up. Um, what you're saying. So I, I thought I'd mention that. All right, so that's uh, it for the capabilities. Um, so in summary, I thought I'd talk to you about some of the things that I don't like about the remote first. So um, as I mentioned in the video, first and foremost, it's not easy to find this remote. You're not going to go to your store and pick it up. You do need to buy it on the internet. You do need to get it shipped directly from China. It is going to take a little bit of time for you to get it. So from an accessibility standpoint, you know, that's that's a con. It's not, it's not easy to obtain. Um, I would probably be shocked if you had a problem with this remote, whether or not you'd get any customer service because you're dealing with somebody all the way in China. Um, anytime you buy a Chinese product, personally, the, the quality control, you have to be concerned about that. I would not be shocked if some remotes work great and some remotes don't because their quality control isn't that great. So that's something that you have to kind of be wary of when you're buying a kind of weird branded uh, product from China. Uh, the manual is confusing. You can't read it. Um, and, you know, from an NVIDIA Shield standpoint where you're going from you know, a four button remote to, I don't know how many buttons are on here, but there's tons of buttons. There's a lot of buttons on here and it is kind of crowded. And I, I wish that there were only buttons on here that were specific for what I needed, but you know, it is a remote that's supposed to work for, with a lot of different operating systems. So that's why all those buttons are on there. But the buttons are crowded. They're small and sometimes they're difficult to get to, especially that voice control button, which I talked to you about. Um, the the uh, radio frequency technology 2.4 gigahertz can actually be a problem. You know, I sit about um, I don't know 15 feet away from my television. Uh, a vast majority of the mo remote works pretty well, but when I'm using the keyboard keys for some reason, sometimes it doesn't. Um, it, it makes mistakes with that, and I'm assuming there's some kind of interference with the radio frequency. Uh, so you know. Um, I'm going to try to actually move the dongle a little bit closer, you know, so it's more in the line of sight now with a radio frequency that shouldn't matter. But I have heard that if you have the dongle in, in, uh, in line of sight, it works better. So I'll get an extension cable and check out and see if that helps a little bit with, uh, with the sensitivity of the remote. Uh, the voice control is a two-step process. It's kind of clumsy. Uh, the mic um, picks up your voice um, kind of low, so if you have a lot of background noise going on around you, it's going to make mistakes. Uh, so, you know, it's not as nearly as good as the NVIDIA Shield, but it does work. So, um, um, and I think that's, that's, that's it from cons. In terms of pros, it's low cost. This thing is going to, this thing's going to be $30, $35. This is $15. Um, it has a nice size. It's got pretty decent build. Um, uh, it does use AAA batteries, which is nice. Uh, as I mentioned, it uses radio frequency, so you can use both these remotes at the same time. Uh, it has backlit keys, which I really, really uh, appreciate. It's got a good tactile feeling and sound feedback when you're pushing the buttons. Navigating through the menus on the NVIDIA Shield work really, really well. Um, when you're pressing the navigation buttons. It's got really good volume control. It's got mute control. The power button works really well. Uh, you can get into your power uh, menu really easily with, 
with this remote. Uh, it does have a keyboard. I don't use it that much, but you know that is a pro. Uh, it has learning keys. Again, I don't use it, but again, that's a pro if you're going to use that. Um, and you know, it does have voice control that works. Uh, there are a bunch of different remotes out there that claim that voice control works, but they don't work. So I will tell you that with this particular remote, it does work with the NVIDIA Shield well, and the voice control does work. Does it work as well as the NVIDIA Shield? No, but it, you know, um, it, it does work. Um, so, you know, my final scoring for this product, I'd give it a 10 out of 10 for ergonomics and, um, you know, how, how well it feels in the hand. I give it an 8 out of 10 for capabilities. Um, it, you know, it, it functions pretty well. I gave it a little bit of a uh, knocks down on some interference that I'm detecting when, uh, when I'm using the, uh, the dongle. Um, for voice control, I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. Uh, compared, you know, my baseline is the NVIDIA Shield. It has to be, you know, that's going to be my 10 out of 10, that if it does as good of a job as NVIDIA Shield, and it doesn't, it's a little clunky and clumsy in terms of how it uses voice control, but it works. Um, so anyway, so that's my uh, review of the Wokai Airfly mouse, otherwise known as the CTK628 Air Mouse, otherwise known as the Link Style Air Mouse. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to um, ask them in the descriptions. I know this is a really long video, and you know you might think it's kind of boring since I spent I don't know 25 minutes talking about a remote, but you know when you are accessing all your content through your television and your NVIDIA Shield, you want to have, uh, you know, the most important thing that, that that you need is a good remote. So I thought I'd spend a little bit of time talking about how well this works with the NVIDIA Shield. So thanks for watching.